Either you're going to love me or hate me. Doing what's right, even when everything is going bad in your life, has been one of the biggest lessons that I've learned in my life. And I've actually learned that from, you know, studying the Bible, the Word. Uh, when I was in segregation, I picked up every single book you could possibly think of, from the Quran to Buddhism to Ju Judaism to, you know, Christianity everything because I was so hungry to know why there was so much hate why there was so much just everything like why everything why did everything happen to me let's get into this video What's up? My name is JC. I am Ron Strong. If you're new to my channel, make sure you subscribe, hit the bell, thumbs up, thumbs down. You know what it is. If you're part of my crew, mi familia, mi raza, mi pandilla, Chicago's finest. What's up? Suanza la suburban. Let's take a ride. Hey, you know, so I wanted to do this video because you know, a lot of, I get a lot of comments, you know, and, and they'll ask me like to, to speak on other people or what I think about this or what I think about that. And, and the biggest thing that I want to I want to share with everybody is, is this, is that my, my change has come in periods in my life, like in chapters, you know, um, at the beginning when I first I mean, I've always read the Bible, whoever, whoever been to prison has picked up the Bible because when they got those cuffs on you, you're you're praying to Virgin, the Virgin Mary. You're praying you're praying to everybody because you don't want to go to jail. And if you say you're not, then something's wrong with you. <laughs> you know. So when I went away, man, and, and we got sent to that uh, New Vegas private prison where they were keeping all the uh, prisoners that were gang members isolated, I started picking up. A lot of religion books and I started reading them reading them because like I've told you guys in the past religion has always been part of my life you know um, I grew up a, a Catholic and I got sent to church on regular basis every every Sunday Wednesday nights I had to shine my shoes my mom was just like I, I would it, it just there, there was no question you I had to go I had to do my community I was baptized all that stuff you know so it got a point in my life where I started asking myself, why did, why did all these bad things happen to me then if there's a God out there, if there's, you know, all, the, all this stuff about religion, you know? So, like I said, I picked up every single book you could possibly think of. I even went to school <laughs> for two years while I was in there. And I got an associate's in religion. I wanted to know why. Why did all these things happen to me? Why, 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 why? And the biggest thing that I learned from everything, man, like Buddhism, Quran, Judaism, Christianity, everything, man, is doing the right thing even though you don't want to. You know, I, I used to have a really hard time with the whole, like, turn your cheek to the other side. But the thing is, this is the thing. This is the thing. This is the thing. You guys hear me say that a lot. <laughs> it's not about turning the cheek. You're mis you, we can misread that or we could kind of like confuse it with, you know, just let somebody abuse you. No. If there's somebody negative in your life, you can eliminate that person and not interact with them. You don't have to interact or actually let certain situations guide you and make for you to make the wrong choice because at at the end of the day it's either a right or a wrong choice that's it point blank this is where most of my spiritual growth has come from is doing the next right thing that's where it all begins do i go to service every sunday uh, I try to make it every Sunday, it's not Saturday, but I'm not perfect. I don't make it all the time. Do I make every AA meeting? Sometimes I don't, sometimes I do. 
But every day I have that choice to make a better choice. Every day that I wake up is a blessing. So every day I get to better myself little by little, little by little. Remember, this is not a sprint. <laughs> it's, it's just, this is an all life race. And you even see it in, you know, in, in people that do 90 day diets that they'll lose all the weight and guess they, they go on an eating bench and then gain all the weight back. The change has to be coming in small frames in your life. So that way you can actually change because you know, a lot, a lot, I get it a lot, a lot where they're like, oh, you know, you're just, you're putting up an act, you're, 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 you're really not changed like that. You're really not that motivational. I'm not perfect, dude. I'm not saying that I wake up every day in this motivation state and perfect stage and I don't swear and no, no. I just have gotten better at coming back and getting back on the horse when I fall off. Cause it doesn't get easier, you just get better at it. And it's with everything in life. That's why I compare workouts to everything in life. Because if you're not constantly feeding yourself good knowledge in your head, and your heart, then you're constantly making the same mistakes over and over again. I always share a, a, a story of my life with the message that I give. And, and the story that I want to share today is after I had spent almost a year in solitary confinement, I, was, I wasn't doing well mentally. I wasn't doing well uh, in many, many ways. I was in a very bad, bad dark place. Because when you have to sit in a quiet room with no human contact at all, guess what? Those demons get really loud in your head and they start to echo and they start to ask you and they start to cut you down. They start to ask you and, and you start to question everything about your life, everything, everything, every choice you made, every, every bad and good decision, everything. We had just opened up a brand new facility in Vegas. It was a private prison and they started separating all the gang members. Well, there was a Mongol, an MC Mongol that was in that housed with nobody. They left him by himself. He was a straight troublemaker for the whole time I was there. All I heard him was bang on the door, talk crap to the CEOs, throw stuff under the door. He was just, <laughs> He was just a mess, you know? And a big fight happened with the Bloods and the Crips and they started bringing them in, bringing them in, bringing them in and they started double selling everybody, double selling everybody, double selling everybody. And for some reason, in my heart, I just knew that I needed to be housed with him. He was on the second floor. I was on the bottom. And I used to just hear him all the time. We never kicked it, we never sent kites, nothing. In my heart, I just felt like I needed to go up there. I asked, I asked the uh, white shirt came in and I asked him, I was like, hey, can you house me upstairs with, you know, with that guy? And he's like, well, you're gonna have to sign, <laughs> you're gonna have to sign a waiver because I guess he had beat up his past two cellies. <laughs> so I was like, I'm down, you know, let's do this. They moved me up there, and when I first got there, I could tell it was like, you know, don't cross this line, you know, who are you, blah, 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 show me, show me your paperwork, where do you come from, like, I was sitting on the toilet, he was sitting on the edge of the bed, at the bed, and it was like, uh, almost like a standoff, like a cowboy standoff, and we were just going back and forth, you know, and I, I was telling them about, you know, how I had got into like small books in the Bible and I was reading them and about Buddhism and, and just all these things that I had learned while I had spent that time down there trying to like better myself and get my head in the right place. Because my whole life, I was always trying to figure out how to change. I just didn't know how. So. I knew that I wasn't a bad guy because a bad guy doesn't feel bad after he does bad things. 
And I did, I've done some really bad shit, some really bad stuff, but I always felt bad and it always bothered me afterwards. So I knew that I wasn't a bad guy. Well, you know, we sat down, we talked, we talked most of the night. Most of the night, went to bed. The next day I got up and I was like, hey, do you wanna, do you wanna pray? And he's like, I don't know how. I was like, I'll teach you what I know. I'm not saying that I'm like a pastor or nothing. I'll teach you what I know. And I started telling him stories, you know, about what I had read, you know, this guy that slept on the rock. At the time, I didn't know what the purpose of all this was. Today, I know the purpose. I know why I went through what I went through. I know why I studied what I studied. I know why I went through those, through those fires today. But back then I didn't. So I started sharing with him stories. I started teaching him. I taught him how to play chess. Uh, we started working out. We started doing, you know, 100 burpees in the morning, 100 burpees at lunch. Uh, boxing, I started teaching him how to um, box. I went to boxing school in Chicago, the Windy City Boxing School, over there close to the dark side, 26th Street. <laughs> I went there for two years. And I know the basics, I still remember them. So, you know, I, I taught him how, how to do that and we would box with the, with the sandals. And then we started rolling up the, you know, the bed and, and started doing heavy bag. And I just started teaching them everything that I knew and what I was learning in the process. We built one of the greatest friendships to this day that I, that I have, you know, and I, I always tell people that I've made some of the greatest friends in prison because think about it. You, you build a camaraderie and a friendship in chaos, destruction, hate, all these things. But you're ma you manage to create a friendship with somebody, a bond, that the day that he walked out of there, the day he got transferred, we both actually broke down and cried because we had spent so much time together building our friendship and, and, and our camaraderie and, and just everything. We would play chess every day. We would, we, we would talk about our lives, what we wanted to do, all these things. And, and this is the thing, man, like, there's so much hate out there. There's so much talk about, a lot of people would have been like, oh, well, that's, that's gay, that, that's not tough. But look, man. I've said it before in all my past videos, man. It ain't even about that no more. About being tough or be about being a gangster. <laughs> I had life all wrong my whole life. And today I know why. Why I was able to feel it in my heart that I needed to go up there and spend those last three months with him before he left. Why? I studied what I studied, why I, I wanted to get out of my organization, why I needed to do all the things that I needed to do. What happens to a car that you leave parked in front of your house? And this is, this is a message that I actually heard today at the service and like it hit me so hard. God can't do nothing with a, with a parked car. He can't guide it, he can't, he can't, it can't move. It doesn't go nowhere. If you leave a car parked in front of your house, what happens? It starts to deteriorate by itself. The air comes out of the tires, the motor locks up, the paint starts, it starts to rot. It just starts to fall apart. And this is what I mean about change. Even if you're just moving at a slow pace, don't think that you're gonna get out and, and change your whole life around or you're gonna like from one day to another change your diet and, and have a six pack. It takes time, it takes time for everything. But as long as that vehicle is moving, that's all that matters. That's all that matters. You just have to want to still move because if you stay parked, guess what? Nothing ever happens. With time, you'll know what your purpose is. I tell everybody, everybody has gifts. Everybody has, you know, they say, well, in this world with all this stuff going on, you know, where are the miracles? Where are this? I tell people, yeah, I'm, I'm a miracle. I, I shouldn't even be here right now. But I, I have a purpose and I have to fulfill it to the fullest. To the fullest. 
smartphones are miracles. Uh, <laughs> all these smart cars and every, all these are miracles. Why is there so much hate in this world? Because we have the choice to either do right or wrong. Point blank. You either walk this way or you walk that way. That's it. But you need to move in the right direction if you want good things to happen. Because guess what? If you move in the wrong direction, bad things happen. I'm not saying that your life is gonna be perfect because if it was perfect, then everybody would be a success. Everybody. And I'm not saying it's gonna be easy. You get better at doing it. You get better at making better decisions. It's taking me time to get here. But get used to it because I'm here and I'm not going nowhere. My name's JC. I am Ron the Strong. Hey, don't judge nobody. Stay in your lane. Live savage. And remember, you only have one life to live, homie. It's better that you live it out free, off of drugs, and just enjoy life, man. Enjoy your family. Enjoy doing the next right thing. I'll catch you guys on the rebound.